is Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada, our beloved spiritual master, the spiritual master of the whole universe, Jagat Guru, on behalf of Krishna. Krishna Bande Jagat Guru, Krishna is the original Guru. He was a revolutionary. Guru means revolutionary. He wants to turn our lives around and bring us to Krishna. Guru means, first and foremost, an educationalist. He teaches. Teaches what we need to know. <clears throat> Education is meant for teaching what we need to know. That's why we see in the schools and colleges, in the universities in India, the, the emphasis is on subjects that will uh, give a career so you can get money. That's what you need, money, right? So there are engineering so many engineering colleges and so many chartered accountant, law, these are the kind of things for uh, medical, these are the kind of things that bring money. So people think we need to send our children to these. They, they need to know these things so they can get what they need in life, which is money. So Srila Prabhupada kindly pointed out from the Vedic literature that our real prayoja and our real necessity is love of Krishna. And he taught accordingly. He wanted to change the whole direction of human society, beginning from the educational system. Kaumara acharet pragyo dharman bhagavataneha durlabhang manu shangjana tarapya dhruvam arthadam. So much, this is the Srimad Bhagavatam, so much important instruction. Instruction is packed into one verse. That from the very beginning of life, or, or from the Kumara age, five years approximately, one should have in this world, one should study. This education be, should be there about Bhagavad Dharma, the science of God, how, how to link with God, Bhakti Yoga. This human life is very short but it's very valuable. It can give us that which we really need, which is love of Krishna. <clears throat> so Srila Prabhupada had a vision for education, especially the education of his disciples, uh, for the boys, Gurukul. And Gurukul means, not just like in India nowadays, we have so many Gurukuls, which are more or less schools <coughs> run by Hindus in which they, taught, they teach all secular topics and they have a little bit of Hinduism thrown in. But Gurukul means to live in the place of the Guru and to learn how to become a perfect person with perfect character, to, to understand I am the eternal servant of Krishna, forgetting my position as the servant of Krishna. I'm suffering in this material world. I need to surrender to Krishna. This is the purpose of Gurukul education. And Srila Prabhupada compared the educational institutions that the materialistic education, educational institutions, he compared them to a slaughterhouse. Just like the animals, they go to the slaughterhouse to be killed. Obviously, that's what a slaughterhouse means. So the human beings, or the children, or the young people, they go to the educational institutions and their hope for uh, proper understanding, proper utilization of the human life is killed by an education that teaches them you are here to enjoy this world. Probably they never, it, it might not even be said in all the 20 years or whatever they are in the, it might, no one may say directly, you are here to enjoy this world, but it's the pulsating, throbbing undercurrent which is there, not only in the schools, in, in the TV and the YouTube and everything, uh, the whole culture, you are here to enjoy this world. And Gurukul teaches us, the gurus teach us, that we are in this material world, anadi karamafale pari bhavarnavajale. 
we are fallen into this material existence due to our uh, desire, karma, to work and enjoy this world, and we're suffering birth and death in this way. <clears throat> so Srila Prabhupada compared this to a slaughterhouse. Um, now, the argument may be given that Srila Prabhupada, his own father, sent him to school, and Srila Prabhupada came out pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Oh, so good. Uh, um, and Srila Prabhupada, he also sometimes encouraged devotees who were studying at university to finish their university degree. He sometimes said that, that if they, they're in the university, they became interested in Krishna consciousness, and sometimes if they were almost finished, he'd say, well, you might as well finish it, now you started it. It's, it's a kind of vibhav, or a kind of, uh, what can you say, uh, What's the English word for vibha? Bhaktisiddhanta vibha. It's a kind of glory or a feather in your cap, something like that, that uh, can be useful in preaching if you say that I have a university degree. Although nowadays in the West, so many people have university degrees. It's not a big thing anymore to have a degree. And in India, among the middle class, it's just expected. It's just, it's nothing special. It's just ordinary. <coughs> So sometimes he encouraged that, and uh, some of his early disciples in America that were going to school, and uh, Prabhupada said, well, you can continue in school, because the, the law was there also, that they have to go to school. So he said, you can, you can continue in school, and then later you can come out like that. <clears throat> but his preference was clear, what he wanted for his disciples. He wanted them to send their boys to Gurukul and the girls, they could be homeschooled, but their main education should be uh, to be a housewife, to look after the home. Uh -huh. um, and, and again, you can take it the other way also. Bhakti no Tako, he was, he was also, uh, he went on taking education, even after he, he qualified. And then he was a teacher. Then he, even when he was a teacher, he became, he took law exams and then he became a magistrate. Well, if you can produce one Bhaktivinoda Thakur, we'll be very, very happy. The whole world will be happy. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur himself, in his first public address that was in which he announced to the young intellectual society of Bengal at the time, he, he gave a talk in which he was extolling the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam, which, was a, which he himself said, we, we were trained to hate the Bhagavatam. By the Western education, they were trained to hate the Bhagavatam. And he said that, oh, how in that talk he said how difficult it is to get free of the prejudices that we imbibed in a young age. Because they do. The, the education, materialistic education, it, it treats with disdain any spiritual endeavor. It's, the, the general idea is given that it's foolish to pursue any spiritual path. That's the general idea given. But, uh, yeah, so Srila Prabhupada wanted to have a strong uh, training for children from the beginning of life. Now, in, in Krishna consciousness, in the home also, the girls to be trained in Krishna consciousness, boy or girl, either. But the boys to take a formal education. And even uh, most of the boys may not have a very great education, because if they're going to be farmers, then they're not, academic education isn't needed. Of course, a lot of things have to be learned, how to be a farmer, how to be a, a blacksmith, a, a carpenter, but they, if someone's going to be a carpenter or a blacksmith, they don't require fancy education in all kinds of things which they can't grasp 
and are, are, are going to be of no use to them anyway. In our uh, Guru Kul and Varnashram projects, we, some of the devotees I'm involved with, they've started some projects like this here in India. And uh, at a young age, they, they, they see who's going to be the boys, who's going to be more scholarly, academic inclined, and those who are not, and then those who are not, they give them vocational training in farming or carpentry and these different things, which would be something useful for their whole life. And they can go on chanting Hare Krishna throughout their life. Now, I often wondered how devotees who uh, insist on converting Srila Prabhupada's Guru Kul into some basically mundane school and not having Guru Kuls. Uh, as Srila Prabhupada wanted them, how can they do that? And how can they... Pr then there are others who are very eager to have their children go through the mundane educational system and get some mundane job. Uh, and of course they can chant Hare Krishna also. Uh, <clears throat> but they, they don't get the immersion in Krishna consciousness that they would have if they were going to a gurukul, a proper a, a gurukul as Srila Prabhupada wanted, in which the the central topic of the curriculum is his books. <laughs> uh, in fact, one of Srila Prabhupada's his GBC for India at the time wanted to introduce the government curriculum into Srila Prabhupada's gurukul. And Prabhupada was very strong with him and said, "Never do that." The same person is now directly going against Srila Prabhupada's order and doing that by converting the Guru call into more or less a mundane school. Well, we can say a mundane school with a little, a little sham of Krishna consciousness added onto that. Now, I, I often wonder, how, how can you do that? How can you say that when it's clear what Srila Prabhupada wanted? I, I wondered that for many years. It just, it just seems like deliberate evasion at best, or, or disobedience of what Srila Prabhupada said. Uh, of course, we often heard the argument that, well, Guru Kul can't work, it's not practical, this, this, that, that. Uh, but just the other day, I was told that uh, someone had quoted the, an Ishopanishad verse to support this idea that we have to send our children to university and this and that. Uh, Ishopanishad verse, Vidyam cha vidyam cha yas tad vedo bhayam saha avidyaya mrityam tirtva vidyaya mrityam ashnatam. Only one who can learn the process of nescience and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality. So there you are. You have to cultivate Vidya and Avidya side by side. You could say, well, it can be cited in this regard, but then we have to see what exactly does that mean? Does that mean that we have to cultivate Krishna consciousness and nonsense? We, ha we, we have to cultivate nonsense or ignorance. If we, I won't read the whole purport, but it's quite long, but uh, just a summary of it is that um, Srila Prabhupada comments that we have to make the best of a bad bargain. We're in this material world. We require, the body requires some necessities and therefore some knowledge of how to live and work in this material world is required. But we should know, what we should know the, about the avidya or the ignorance is that this ignorance binds us in birth, death, old age and disease. This we should know. We should know, we, we should study what is ignorance from the platform of knowledge. What does that mean? We should hear Krishna's instructions in Bhagavad Gita and understand Dukhalaya Mashashvatam. This material world is a world of ignorance, of repeated birth and death, of suffering, where everything is temporary. So this is what we should understand about ignorance. Not that we have to learn 
uh, Darwin's theory and all, so many things about this material world in detail so that we can get a job or whatever. Uh, we don't require... Well, people may say, well, how are you doing? You see, this broadcasting is being done by modern technology. Unless someone studies this, how can this be done? But we don't require to study that. Someone else is doing that. They can do it. And we'll take advantage. We can use that technology. We don't have to become experts in technology. Or even how to use all these things. You don't have to go to university for years to study all these things. You can learn it. It's not, it's not so difficult. If, and, in, and even if that's not required. Just like on our farm communities, we don't have electricity. In our gurukuls, we don't have electricity. That's deliberately so that we don't get entangled in Facebook and WhatsApp and all these kind of things. So that we can concentrate on reading Srila Prabhupada's books and chanting Hare Krishna and, and working for Krishna and living together as a community for Krishna. So to take this idea from Srimad Bhagavatam and try to use it to justify a, a policy that, which is directly against Srila Prabhupada's policy here for education. Again, he did make allowances. He, he didn't... Uh, he didn't... Uh, totally and in all respects reject uh, mundane education, but his clear preference for his disciples, what he told them to do is to never, in, in our own educational institutions, never to, uh, never to bring in government curriculum, materialistic curriculum, to focus clearly on Krishna consciousness. So I, I, I wondered how, how they could do that. Well, here's the answer, but it's really a misuse or a personal interpretation because we have some idea we like to be Krishna conscious but we don't really want to follow all those things so we just tweak it a bit and it's it's uh, there's nothing in this verse or this purport to support that we should promote mundane education it's just not there there's nothing in Srila Prabhupada's teachings that we should promote mundane education. Srila Prabhupada, being pragmatic, would sometimes make some adjustment with that. Uh, again, if someone's already doing mundane education, then, all right, let them, let them finish that. If they've done three and a half years of a four-year course, they can finish it, take the degree, and then come and practice Krishna consciousness. He also wanted PhDs for his uh, Bhaktivedanta Institute. But he didn't tell anyone to leave the Krishna conscious ashram and go and get a PhD. If someone was already doing that, he encouraged them to finish it. But he didn't take anyone out from their, already their practice of Krishna consciousness to do that. So this dushtaman, tumi kisha vaishnava, oh wicked mind, what kind of a vaishnava are you? This, this tendency to, to take the instructions and twist them around. Just like in the beginning of the Bible, it stated that God gave man dominion over the animals. So they take that to mean we should kill the animals and eat them. It's a completely horrible idea, horrible misinterpretation that man should take charge of the animals doesn't mean that you kill them and eat them. It doesn't say that. So that's a misinterpretation because people want to eat animals. This is how great spiritual teachings and great spiritual movements get destroyed. That people, they have some attraction to it, but they don't want to fully give themselves to it. So they, they want to pick and choose uh, according and, and not take the teachings as they are with full faith in the, in the uh, teachings of the, of the Acharyas, the teachings of God, and think, well, my, I, I, my own intelligence is better. So this is the way spiritual movements get destroyed. Not, Srila Prabhupada himself said, our movement cannot be destroyed from outside, only from inside. 
if we ourselves remain strong in following what Srila Prabhupada has given, which is the summation of all the previous acharyas, of all the Vedic knowledge, the, the, the truth of Krishna consciousness is given by Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita. So if we, we'll be very strong, as strong as Krishna, if we follow all the principles with full faith. But then if we want to change it a little, then we lose the protection of Krishna. We go on the slippery path, the slippery slope to downfall. So we should be very, very careful. I'm just giving that as an example of how we shouldn't twist the teachings. And we should be very, very serious about uh, Srila Prabhupada's plans for Varnashram Dharma, for Gurukul, and not uh, reinterpret, misinterpret, malinterpret with our overly fertile brains. Hare Krishna. So, so some addendum on what I spoke about the uh, education is that, well, an objection may arise that, you see, we have devotees who have got their university degrees and they've done all kinds of services, uh, which they wouldn't have been able to do if they didn't have that advanced university education. And uh, one great example of this is uh, Sadaputa Prabhu, who his contributions in the scientific field are uh, immense. He couldn't have done that if he wasn't, if he hadn't done his PhD and everything. Uh, of course, the the scientific fields that he did make contributions within were not restricted to the area that he did his PhD in. His May is well, it's difficult to say because he made several important contributions. But the one by which he's best known, which is being um, because of the work that's being continued on it by Jutta Karma Prabhu, is his uh, co compilation with Jutta Karma Prabhu of the Forbidden Archaeology book. But his own line was mathematics, and he actually did a very important work uh, long before that by. Uh, Prove, he made a monograph that uh, demonstration by information theory that life cannot arise from matter. And that was based on his mathematics field statistics and this and that. So he couldn't have done that if he wasn't a PhD. True. And there may be other devices. Druta Kama Prabhu himself is doing trem tremendous service in um, combating Darwinian and Neo-Darwinian <laughs> evolutionary theory. Uh, but he didn't have any education in this line. He was educated. Um, edu he did have some level of university education. Um, so he may say, well, if, if they didn't have that, they couldn't have that. You know, that's true, but that doesn't mean that we should make as a policy against Prabhupada's instruction to subject our children to this kind of education. We can preach to people and out of the preaching some Jutta Karmas and some Sada Putas and so many others may come, but we should give our children the best chance for being Krishna conscious by uh, giving them an education which is solidly grounded in understanding that the goal of life is to serve Krishna and love Krishna, that should be the goal of our education. And some of them and they, they, some of them may come out and they'll be so bright that they can pick up so many things and go on also to uh, in preaching even in fields of mundane education. Um, mundane, it, it, this education, if someone's really bright, then they can, if they're really bright, then they'll be, there are so many people who are self-educated or picked up so many things. Here in Tamil Nadu, the uh, Ramanuja, the mathematician, he wasn't formally trained in mathematics. Einstein himself was uh, an academic failure, so 
Um, yeah, but that's the point. We should give our children immersion in Krishna consciousness. And others we can preach to. And then they, then they can be, become Krishna conscious and they can use that education, which is meant for materialistic purposes, to undermine the ideas on which the materialistic society runs on. Just like we need a wooden handle for an axe to cut down a tree, which is only wood. So in the same way, if people have got this bad education, it can be used to cut down that wrong civilization. But it's not true that, that we should give our children a mundane education with the idea that they can later use that in Krishna's service. If that was true, then Srila Prabhupada would have made, he would have told us, but he told us very clearly something different. Then one simple point instead of giving all these arguments is why don't we just do what Prabhupada said? It makes things simple, doesn't it? That's why we have a guru, isn't it? He's supposed to do what they say with the, with the idea that they know better. And there will be so many. I did, well, Guru Call is not run properly, this and that, but there have been severe problems. But uh, even if a Guru Call isn't, in terms of educational, the, the, edu the, the, the pedagogic skills of the teachers is not up to the, up to the stand of a mundane school, still. The very fact that the, the, the central point is Krishna makes it better. And it's uh, just like the, the animal. What, what you, you may put them out in the field and even if they don't give them enough proper shelter in the rain or you don't look after them very properly, but they're allowed to, they're allowed to run in the field you may say, well, better to send them to a highly sophisticated, modern, technological slaughterhouse. <laughs> because the, uh, the farmer doesn't look after them so well. That's not a good argument. <laughs> because the slaughterhouse has good education. Slaughterhouse education is very efficient. So better we send them to the slaughterhouse. Not a good argument. So you can send. <laughs> send your children. Of course, parents are worried and they, they should be concerned. But we who are supposed to be the leaders of ISKCON, we should make, we should put so much energy into making the arrangement by which we can do guru calls properly as Prabhupada wanted rather than saying, oh, we can't do it. Just send them to the slaughterhouse. Not a good argument. Hare Krishna. And if you don't like it, well, Paribhattu jano yata tata va nanu mokaro navayang vichara yamaha Hari rasa madira madati mata bhuvi viluthama natama nirvishama. Let the people say whatever they like. Let them criticize us in so many ways. But we drinking the intoxicating wine of Hari rasa, we shall become as if mad or intoxicated, rolling on the ground and dancing without consideration. Bhaktisthan Sarsar Thakur sometimes quote this at the end of his lectures. He would give such devastating, revolutionary lectures and at the end say, well, anyway, people may not appreciate it, but what the hell? <laughs> We're going to chant Hare Krishna. <coughs> Another, he would finish his lectures, Dante Nidhaya Chirnakang Padayo Nipatya Kritvak Taking a straw in my mouth, falling down at your feet, 
again and again uh, ingratiating my, myself to yourself, I just have this th one thing t to say to you, oh great saintly person, just give up all your stupid hogwash ideas, throw them away to a long distance, and develop loving attachment for the lotus feet of Chaitanya Chandra. Hare Krishna. Chaitanya Chandra Sharane Kurutanu Ragam. Hare Krishna. Lanchakam.